And welcome to the Condo Insider Show. I'm your host today, Cheryl Franklin, and today we will have a unique show, one where we discuss a few marginalized associations where boards behave poorly. Unfortunately, it does happen. As our guest today, we have Capono Kiakona, an attorney who has seen it all. Capono will share with us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Regular show um, co-host, if you will, Krista Stadler, will also bring into play the importance of associations treating tenants respectfully. I'd like to welcome back my friend Cap Krista and introduce my other friend Capono. Welcome, Capono. Uh, let's start with you sharing with with us a little bit about yourself. Well, I started practicing. I graduated law school in two thousand and one. I clerked for a year. And I started practicing in condo work as a insurance defense counsel, actually. Did that mm. for a few years, um, represented some boards. And then for the last, say, 13 years or so, I've been exclusively focused on condominiums. Didn't and, know and that about you. I know. And I as your friend, what's with the new look you have going there? Okay. <laughs> I've known you for a while. <laughs> so this is a Halloween thing. My family, we dress up for Halloween together. Oh, Ooh. you take it to a whole new it's, level. It's past Halloween, by the way. <laughs> it, it is, it is. So we, we do uh, just, uh, just my wife and my two kids. Oh, so cute. this year we uh, decided on a theme. But before that, sometime in June, this is not an immediate growth. So sometime in June, I told my wife, I said, look, I'm going to grow out a beard because if you decide on the theme in September, uh, I, can't have a, uh, yeah, I can't have a full <laughs> beard. So I, I grew it out. And uh, so what we did is we are DC superheroes. So my son is Nightwings, if you're a Batman fan. Um, yes. The original oh, Robin. I admitted that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the original Robin, uh, Dick Grayson, became Nightwing. So that's who, oh. who he is. My daughter is uh, Flash. Nice. My wife, not really a superhero. She's Catwoman. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. And then I went dressed as Aquaman. So Aquaman. I grew out the beard, yes. And yeah. The hair has been long. And it's, yeah. I, okay, now I get it. You look yeah. just like Jason Momoa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. So you have pictures you'll share. Well, I, that, and that's the other aspect of it. What we do is our Christmas photos we do in costume as well. Oh, oh that's a cute idea. Because yeah. normally you buy a Halloween costume, you yeah. use it once. At right. least we get two choices out that's of it. That's kind of cool. Then, Perfect timing. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice I idea. Steal that idea from you. Hey, okay. go to, I think everyone should do at least something fun for their Christmas photo. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Silly year. Yeah. Whatever it is. So next year, if I see you with a shaved head or something, I'll know it's for Halloween. Yes. All or, right. Or it just got hot. It's right? fun. <laughs> it's, <yeah. laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Well, I wanted to bring up why are we talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly? What has prompted us to have this discussion? And um, as a majority of you may have seen uh, on Hawaii News Now on November 9th, there was a um, story regarding a woman in Kailua Kona that had been charged basically a million dollars for her conduct yeah. in, an, in an association managed complex so maybe you know a little bit more about the details just i know bit. just 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 what i gathered from the, from news. the news so i've read the articles on it and, and and i've seen the photos and what you see and the video and what you see is someone who is acting as a menace to her to her owners fellow residents yes mm -hmm. yeah and so Which, that's the that that's a tough scenario and one which according to what i've read had been going on for many years years even yeah Wow. And so, so that's why it became such a large um, verdict Award. against her. Yes. Wow, a million dollars. That's that's that'll hurt. That's that'll the, discourage bad behavior. That that will. Yeah. That, that tends to help. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm sure you've seen a lot of unique and bad behavior. So let's just start. Let's start with a few examples and talk about that and the consequences of. Certainly. And the expensive consequences of, of bad behavior. And I'd like to, just before you jump in, just kind of, you know, just speak to the fact that most, 90% of boards behave according to best practices. Would you agree? It's only like a small or 
Yes. You would agree. Yes. <laughs> I, I would agree. <laughs> no, we're hoping. Uh, yeah. We're no, hoping. Absolutely. I, I'd be way busier otherwise. Um, oh, no, yes. good Mo point. Most boards listen to their property manager, they listen to their attorneys, and they follow along and do what they're supposed to do. Okay. Um, some don't. I, yeah. You know, and what I've, what I've realized and what, what those out in the community either know or should know is that there is a small percentage of board members who have gotten on the board with an axe to grind. Mm -hmm. right? They have mm -hmm. their, or an agenda. Their yes, own agenda. They have their agenda and they stick to it and they forget that as a board member, you have this fiduciary duty. Right? Your duty is to protect the values of the association. Mm -hmm. It is to put the needs of the association above your needs when you're making decisions on the board. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're living your life. That's different, that's yeah. Different. And take the emotion out of it. Yes, absolutely. Um, so what you see sometimes, and, and there's, there's a whole laundry list of different things that happen. One of the, the more egregious things is you'll, you'll see self-dealing for board members. So what they'll do is they'll vote on things that they have a personal financial stake in or something that will benefit their family. Uh, one scenario is I know of a board where the board president was running things and awarded a contract to one of his children to work on design aspects mm. or, oh. or managing contracts for the association. Um, that's a big no -no. conflict of interest. Yeah, that's a huge, huge conflict, conflict of, of interest. interest. Yeah, I, I know of another board where they switched their insurance agent to a family member who happened to be an insurance agent, but their focus was. Maritime, I believe, the maritime insurance. And then, oh. as you guys know, yeah. <laughs> condo insurance is a very specialized area. Right, yeah. You know, there's, there's just a few people that do it, and, mm -hmm. and those that do it know exactly what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And so, with that one, they got into a lot of trouble. They didn't have the right kind of coverage. They had sure. a serious issue. And, and it's bad for the association. I've seen others where they have hired a spouse as the GM for the property. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. I've, seen that, yes. I've well. seen that. Now that works if your spouse, if you, one, if you're not voting on it, and two, if your spouse has prior um, experience, experience as a GM. Mm -hmm. Then that's fine. You say, look, I'm not going to vote. Um, I'm going to leave this up. I will disclose this is my spouse. But please note, these are the, the qualifications they have, and by all means, have other people that you are considering. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Well, that's uh, the proper way to do it. I've seen it where it's kind of, I think the, the board president, I'm speaking from experience, kind of intimidates the other board members and they feel obligated to vote his way even if he loses himself. But that's, that's bad behavior as well. That is, that is absolutely. And that's one of the bigger problems you see it's often with board presidents, when these things go off the rails, what happens is is the board president has either bullied their way mm -hmm. into getting everyone mm -hmm. to go their way, or the other board members have abdicated their responsibility. To mm. them it's just easier to let one person make the decision. It's easier to just push it off, and they forget and say, look, this is a decision for the board. It's not just to rubber stamp what the board president has done. Right. And that yeah. happens. What percentage, so let's say 90% are doing fine, and there's the 10% that oh, are right. off the rails. I, right. I think it's a higher percentage that are doing fine. Oh, yeah, I, I would yeah. be way busier if it were. <laughs> but let's just say of the percentage that are having issues and that they come, they come to you. Mm -hmm. uh, of that group, what percentage do you find, it's, it's basically either because they weren't educated on the right way to do X, Y, Z, or maybe a contract they didn't have reviewed prior they, they kind of stumbled into this problem, not on purpose, and then the others that were more you know, straightforward, like what you just mentioned. Do you find more of them are the ones that, gosh, if they had just had an attorney look this over or known about these particular laws or things that they needed to refer back to their declarations on before acting? I think it's kind of, it's an even toss-up. It is. Right? Because okay. what you have is people like the, the route of the least resistance. Right, and they love to go that way. The other aspect, and this comes up in the context of boards not doing what they need to do, is often they are uh, brought on 
under the auspices of saying, well, I will save the association money. Yeah. Right? That's, that's the big push. Mm -hmm. So they're making decisions premised on that, saying, well, I'll keep maintenance fees down, thereby ignoring the fact that your job is to preserve the asset, and sometimes preserving the asset costs money. Right. It's a balance on that. Um, it always is an absolute costs money. Yeah, yeah, it always costs yeah. money. It always costs money, and it is a balance. Um, but the the things that we've seen, some of the worst things we've seen, and I'm I'm sure you can speak to this, is there's the push between the board and sometimes the management company saying, well, we can underfund this aspect of the reserves because we believe that this has a life of mm -hmm. 25 years, yeah. even though it's already been 15 years and it's got a 30-year life. Right. I've, I've seen that more often than I'd like to admit. Under the guise of, like you said, uh, keeping maintenance fees low, and boards are not construction experts. They're not experts at all, really. That's why it's important to invite contractors and project managers to educate the boards because if their premise is to keep maintenance fees low and it's time to paint the building and they're like, oh, it looks fine. I think we can push that off another five years. And like you said, it's been 15. And then there are spalling issues that present a liability. I can think of one example. I think it was in Waikiki where there was spalling falling from the lanai. Oh. and uh, thankfully, in this case that I remember, it didn't hurt anyone. But then when we looked under the hood, it had been like at least 20 years before they painted and treated the spalling. So that's, that's a huge liability um, for the association under the guise of keeping maintenance fees low and kicking the can down the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're, mm -hmm. they're kicking the can down the road. But the problem is, is, and I'm sure you can give me better numbers on it, but you tend to see this when they refuse to raise it any percentage point. You know, I think it's safe to say 3% a year. That's just general cost, that's of general cost of living. That's what you should raise it. When they don't do that, they get mad. They, they, these mm -hmm. boards that refuse to raise it, mm -hmm. they get mad when, and I'm sure you deal with this more than anyone, um, they get mad when you come back and say, hey, we've got to raise this 8% this, these next three years. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've had to do that. Um, and in some cases, we've, we've had to raise them 50%, even 100%. And some boards think, oh, we'll just get a loan. You're, that's against the law as well. You can't fund under the guise of we'll get a loan or underfund, thinking you'll get a loan later. Um, and assuming you can qualify for it. But this is a good place for a break. We're going to take a quick break and continue the conversation. So please come back and join us. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanneman. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past, we need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about, human stories about law and life. Aloha. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us. We're just going to continue our conversation on bad behavior, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think uh, the conversation lends itself to not just, um, I don't want to use the word malfeasance, but just in bad behavior as it pertains to managing the association. We also have to think about tenants, because many of our boards 
or associations are um, maybe a percentage is owner occupied. So we have a bunch of tenants that are actually sometimes mistreated. And you can speak to that better than anybody. Yeah, it typically happens where there's a higher majority of owner-occupied properties. Mm. Um, and then you'll get in like a sixplex, you'll get one tenant. And everybody knows that that's a rental unit. And so they're just scrutinized heavily. My situation was, I was actually, I've pretty much owned my own home most of my life, but sometimes you have periods in between mm -hmm. where you've sold and you haven't purchased. And I was a tenant in a very nice housing development. And it was like the rental house, you know, we're talking nice homes, but there was a shared driveway and it was, it was almost like everyone else is living their life, but one little step off and they're just on you, on you. So you're, you're not being uh, treated as, as everyone else would. For, for example, I'll give you an example. My dog got loose. Well, the people across the street who've owned their house and lived there for years, his dogs had gotten loose many times and ended up in my yard and I'd walk them back over. My dog got out once, and I'm getting uh, letters Citations from the board. And... Yeah, so <laughs> those are the kind of things where there's a difference between how a tenant's being treated. And do you see things come across your desk like that? Yeah, that's absolutely the the issue of selective enforcement is yep. huge. Yeah, that's that's a big problem. So you'll see it sometimes against tenants. Uh, the 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 really hard one is when you have a board member who's having an issue with a neighbor. A personal. A personal issue, and they bring it up at the board meeting all the time and say, we have to do this. And we always have to counsel our boards to say, if neither of these people had any connection to the board, what would you do? It doesn't matter how loud this board member squawks. Mm -hmm. What matters is, are you treating this person as if well, let's say as if the, the person that's being complained against was on the board versus the board member complaining. Um, that's always my go-to with boards when they say, look, this person's terrible, they're doing this, they're doing that. And I say, respectfully, let's assume they're terrible. What would you do if they were your best friend in this situation? What if this was your friend, would you do the citation? If you would, great. Probably have a discussion, which yeah. wouldn't that just be great? <laughs> oh, communication. communication. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Life. yeah. But they, you know, the people tend to say, I don't like this. I've put them in this box where I don't like this yeah. person. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's find them. Yeah. yeah. And those fines can get excessive. I, I've seen that as well. And I've seen fines that were um, what you call selective, selective enforcement to the point where the association was on a mission to evict, if you will. So just going through the process, they wanted to make sure that they had cited them enough, reasonable or not, selective or not, because at some point um, you can, if you get so many citations, you can file a motion via the attorney to evict. And that's unfortunate as well if, you know, when it's unreasonable. Um, on the rental side, when we're managing a property that's in a complex and there, we, we, we like to have a lot of communication with the resident managers and whoever the association management company is so that we'll get that first notice that there's an issue happening. And mm. then we, in our management or lease agreement with the tenant, it states that they have to follow all house rules, mm. any fines that are incurred, even though it's assessed to the owner, they'll be responsible for paying. Typically, a warning comes in first, so it comes to us, even though they may get a letter on their door from the resident manager, it comes to us, and then we give them another friendly reminder that the next one's going to be, you know, some kind of financial amount that they're going to have to pay, you know, fine. Mm -hmm. So it, it just helps kind of get them from both sides, and then it allows us to be aware that there's to be a concern, aware, yeah. which we need to be. Yeah. Definitely. And it, it allows you the opportunity to see if it's a valid concern as mm -hmm. well. If, if He's, if this association is targeting the tenant, if you will, uh, which will lend itself to a whole different type of li potential liability, if you will. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how about this influx in the last probably, I'd say, mm. five years of people coming along and going online and buying these certificates from so-called so you know, doctors or medical groups that mm. they have to take a little survey 
answer a few questions and then they get a letter that says that they are being prescribed a, an animal, cat, dog, whatever it might be. Are you seeing a lot of um, legal issues coming across your desk related to that? You see a lot that come up. Um, as a board, what you want to do is you want to understand that each of these needs to be a case-by-case -case basis. It's, it's not the blanket rule. You have a blanket rule of, we make a determination, right? but that determination needs to be actively reviewed but by the board. In the case but of don't service, you, yeah, yeah, but, okay, so can I share with you something go that we're doing? To it, okay. Go to it. <laughs> Because <laughs> this has just been such uh, an issue, and we go to the, you know, our property managers, rental managers in general, every April is fair housing, and we go to these workshops with the folks from HUD and fair housing, fair housing and civil rights, and they have informed us, because we've brought this up every year, that we are allowed, and they provided us a form to not accept the letter, but to require that th that our form, which they've approved, is sent to the care provider. Yes. It has to be in the state of Hawaii, and that they complete it. But it also has a caveat stating, you know, that under perjury, they are confirming that they have evaluated this person. Uh, you know, basically their license could be in jeopardy if, even if it's a nurse or a counselor, if they aren't making a true statement. And then on top of that, so, but we have to be consistent. We mm -hmm. can't look at each case individually. We have to basically say we are treating every single one the same because if we, otherwise we could be favoring one or the other. Right. Well, I, I, what I want us to be clear on is if you are making a determination of, no, we're not going to accept pet, or we're mm -hmm. not going to accept an, an assistance animal, you need to have reviewed this on a case by case. In terms of allowing can, people can to... Can they do that under the current law? They can. It's the limitations, I think, to be clear, you're talking about when you can place reasonable restrictions on it. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, mm -hmm. you can't say no assistance animal ever. That would be foolish. Right. Don't right. do that. Oh, don't absolutely. do that. So if that's what you heard me saying, <laughs> yeah. no, you that is not can. correct. You can't say that <laughs> that yeah. is not correct. Yeah. But you can place reasonable restrictions on it, right? Okay. I mean, clearly, no animals in the pool, right? <laughs> right? Well, yeah. D typically, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah, unless yeah. there's some reason for an exception, and someone asks for that exception. But mm -hmm. yeah. if a blind person falls in and they're seeing eye dog yes. comes and rescues them, we're going to let them rescue and probably yeah. assist. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so in that context, mm -hmm. um, but what, you, what you're talking about in having the... That's the pre-screening portion the pre, the pre -screening Yeah, portion the pre-screening portion, absolutely. I believe the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission may even have a pre-approved form on their website. That, and that may be the one that we're using because they did provide it. Yes. The other thing from the rental standpoint, and I um, actually shared it in a workshop that we went to this morning, another thing that we do is similar to what you're talking about, basically, if it's a pet, we have something called a pet addendum, a true pet, not a comfort or service or assistance animal, but a pet. These are all the things you have to do and abide by, keeping them on their leash and having their shots up to date and, you know, doing pet treatment at the end. Okay, that's pet. With a assistance animal, we, and this was also approved by those groups that I mentioned earlier, we have uh, an amendment to the lease that they sign, which is a reasonable accommodation. They have to follow all house rules, just like you said, you know, defecating in the elevator, whatever it might be. Um, and they have to sign it if they, did, if they are going to have that animal through us. So, because they still can't go in and rip the place apart, yeah. you can't right. ask for an additional deposit, so, but, right? Right, right. Yeah. And, and what you just explained is a great thing for people to remember. Assistance, assistance animals are not pets. Mm -hmm. They are not determined to be pets. So, mm -hmm. you want to have your policy clearly established. Um, that, and for your board to understand that. And too often they throw out uh, the term saying, this is a pet. Well, no, it's an assistance animal. It's a prescription, it's, yes. basically. You yes, know. and, and the Civil Rights Commission has been clear on that. And you don't want to go up against the Civil Rights Commission oh, sure. uh, on this yeah. issue unless you're on solid ground because they are judge, jury, and executioner. 
and they will err on the side of protecting the homeowner, homeowner. or the tenant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's clear. Um, you know, so for boards, the thing to remember is, and this, this falls into the making rules against certain owners, if, if pets and animals are allowed under your project docs, under your bylaws, your CCNRs, whatever, you, you can't make a house rule that says no pets. Right. Yeah. And, right. and I shouldn't have to say that. Yeah. But, but you do. But I do. <laughs> right. No one should have to I say that. that. <laughs> but 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 you have to remind them. You yeah. say you, you can't make house rules that go against what your governing documents require. <laughs> right. That's why you should be busy reviewing those rules prior to them being, you know, publicized to the ownership. Always. Always, always. you should always have your attorney review house rules to make sure there are no conflicts with your doc against your documents right I mean just just as a, as a simple example if, if your documents say no children in the pool generally you're gonna rephrase that because that's a fair housing issue mm, right mm, it, it's mm. an age-related issue um, yeah and it's a familial status so, yeah see there are yeah. things we just don't think about and there are as, a lot still out there that that do probably need to be revised. Yeah, I would imagine. Yes. How many um, associations do you represent? Um, my firm currently represents about three hundred and fifty associations. All that, that here, all in Oahu. Oahu, Big Island, um, all the major islands. Wow. I don't oh. know that we have anything on Molokai. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are there <laughs> well, even that's... any associations there? I don't know. I, I think there are <laughs> one or two. There, there are, are one or two. Okay. Yeah. One or two. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, that should keep you pretty busy. Well, I have more questions, but I think we're running out of time. Oh my so gosh. you know what that means. We're going to do this again. We're going to have the, We're going to do this again. I was going to say we're going to dance again in 2020. <laughs> are, so are we we'll, going to have beer with us next time? Is that um, the end? We'll have to ask the producers we'll if that's have, okay. We'll check on that, but <laughs> they'll have to be in a I'm plastic gonna bottle. Say <laughs> probably not after. After, after. I so got you. Good. All right. So once again, thank you for joining us, and please continue to tune in as we share more tidbits and information and education on condo and association living. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Aloha.